Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to be here with you all today. On behalf of the UN Secretary General, I'd like to thank the COP President Alok Sharma and his team for their efforts for prioritizing energy here at COP26, including through the Energy Transition Council and the great work the team there have been doing. Energy accounts for over two-thirds of greenhouse gas emissions. But at the same time, 759 million people in this world still lack access to basic electricity. And over 2.6 billion don't even have access to clean cooking solutions. Over the next nine years, we have to do two things at once. First, we must cut emissions drastically. The Emissions Gap Report, just released by the UN Environment, told us the new and updated NDCs only take 7.5% of predicted 2030 emissions, while 55% is needed to achieve the Paris Agreement. Second, we must deliver on the promise we made in the Sustainable Development Goal 7, to provide affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy to all by 2030. If we are to do this by 2030, we need to radically rethink how we deliver energy services. We must answer the call of the UN Secretary General and COP President to co-sign coal into history starting with the OECD countries by 2030 and globally by 2040. After 2021, no new coal plants should be in the pipeline, which is also reflected in the great work that has been seen from the Global Coal to Clean Power Transition Statement. If this year is the year we put an end to coal, this must also be the year that we prove to developing countries that clean energy is the most attractive and most affordable option by providing them a clean energy offer. And we must do this through technical assistance, collaboration, and making finance for clean energy dramatically easier to access. We must show why clean energy is an important part of the blueprint for a sustainable future and move beyond thinking that providing clean energy for basic household is enough. It must be energy for businesses, economic growth, and industrial development. Consider the alternative. Right now, we are on track for a 2.7 degree temperature rise, and by 2030, we will still leave over 600 million people without electricity and over 2.3 billion people without clean cooking. This is not compatible with the commitments we made at Paris, or is it compatible with the promise we made in 2015 to achieve sustainable development goals by 2030? We are running out of time, so we have no choice but to be dec decisive and recommit to the collaboration and financing necessary to make just, equitable, and inclusive energy transitions possible for those who have contributed the least to climate change. Together, we are the architects of a sustainable future for all. And on behalf of the Secretary General, I want to thank all of you gathered here for all the great work you have done and committing to all the work ahead. Thank you.